All right. All right. So we're continuing in with our series that we've been on, and um, it truly has um, really been a blessing to me personally, as well as um, I've been hearing reports back from you guys as well. Um, we are going to do better at getting recordings out as fast as possible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pick that up. But uh, if you've been with us, you know that uh, we've been teaching on how to study the Bible. And when you're talking about how to study the Bible, we're not just talking about a casual reading. Uh, you know, we're not just talking about uh, what you would traditionally do uh, in, in, a, in a regular Bible study. But we're really talking about getting in and really coming out with an understanding. Understanding that the scriptures, uh, these reads, this text that we're reading, um, unless we can go in there and find Jesus, then we cannot come out with the life. We cannot come out with the truth. And we cannot come out with the way. Um, so we have to. Uh, go in there and find Jesus. And that's what we've been doing in this series. We've been going into the scriptures and looking for Jesus. All right. That's what we've been doing. And we've also been dealing with it from a covenantal standpoint, understanding uh, that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus Christ remains the same. However, uh, he has always dealt with us according to covenants. And because of that, if we do not know how to rightly divide, if we do not know how to go into the scripture and to actually uh, separate, right? That word rightly dividing, we, we touched on that for uh, so many times in this series. Uh, it meant to make a straight cut. When you look at the Greek word rightly divided, it meant to make a straight cut, really a separation. A lot of times we end up in that place of being ashamed. We end up in that place of walking around, uh, not really leaving with the full understanding because we don't make straight cuts. We take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We take some of that and some of this. You got a little bit of grace and a little bit of law. Got no grace and all like it, it, it gets all bad but we understand that it is the mixture the mixture is the problem and so what we've been doing in this series is we have been really working on rightly dividing we have really been working on uh coming in and using jesus as our as our hermeneutic right jesus as our hermeneutic our way of interpreting scripture right if we don't find it in jesus right if we don't see it in jesus then we need to be willing right being willing to part ways with it right Understand that Jesus is the ultimate explanation of God. That is what we've been working on in this series. Now, we started with the Abrahamic or Noahic covenant. Uh, we moved into the Abrahamic covenant. And right now we're in the Mosaic covenant. Now, the Mosaic covenant is key. Uh, the Mosaic covenant is key because the Mosaic covenant is the largest part of scripture. We've been talking about this in this series. If you open your Bible, right, and you just randomly go to a part in the in the Bible, any place, right, pick a, pick a place and go there, you're going to actually be more than likely you're going to land in the Old Covenant, all right? More than likely because the majority of our text is that. And that is why when we look at our... Uh, Many of us in the way that we've been brought up in church and we look at our childhood, we're exposed, really. We're exposed to Moses before we're exposed to Jesus, right? We're exposed to the law before we're exposed to grace, right? And so it's important for us to understand that. So what we've been dealing with is this Mosaic Covenant. We've been dealing with a really... Um, more specifically numbers when we're looking at the transition so we're going to go back over there and look at that transition and the transition that they had going into this new phase and we talked about really how this can be something that is applicable to us right now because we're going through a transition we're going through a time where god is actually taking us out of one thing and bringing us into the next okay let me uh get that pulled up just a second one second i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen We're going to look at Numbers chapter 3. Actually, Numbers chapter 13. And uh, you guys know we've been working on this technology. Uh, so we, we want to go ahead and get that up for you. Numbers chapter 13. Yvonne's my aide over here. Thank you. Numbers chapter 13, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send out for yourself men so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, 
which I'm going to give to the sons of Israel, you shall send a man from each of their father's tribes, every one a leader among them. Now, remember I right hear, we, we hear the message of, of the father. We hear what he says. He says, go have them look at the land. Go have them see the place that I'm actually taking them to. All right. That I'm actually giving to them. Okay, nothing about that said this is what they need to do. This is the qualifications they need to have. This is the prerequisites that they need to have. Nothing about that uh, said that. But what it was was they essentially, what they did is they, when it got filtered through Moses, it came into being a different thing. So he says in verse 3, so Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran at the command of the Lord, all of the men who were heads of the sons of Israel. These were their names. And we're going to skip past their names. And he says here in verse 17, Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. And he said to them, go up there into Negev, then go up into the hill country, see what the land is like and whether the people who live in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many. Now, here's what happened. God sent a message, but that message was filtered through the law. Paul would write later on in 2 Corinthians 3 that what the law actually does is it puts up blinders. He would go on and say that when the law is read that that there's a veil that goes up, right? That hinders our ability to see God, to understand God, to perceive God, to really catch what God really wants to say. God's heart could not be communicated through the law. So this is what happens as Moses takes the message as he takes the message from God, it comes out a whole nother way. It, he, it, initially, it was go see the land, right? Go spy it out. Go see what it is that I'm giving you. But Moses sends them out, right, to find out more information, right? To find out if they were well able, if they were able to actually take it. He wants them to look at, right, the resume. He wants them to look at the qualifications. What are they up against, right? What are the obstacles that are facing them, right? And that's what happens when God oftentimes gives us a promise or gives us insight on what it is that he is trying to uh, bring to us and give to us. Many times what happens is when we consult with Moses, when we consult with with really a natural way, when we talk about Moses, oftentimes we could talk about a natural way of thinking about things, too, because this is the principle that is in the earth. Right. The principle is I get what I put in. Right. I get out of things where I put in what for for as long as the earth remains. Right. There's going to be seed time and harvest. Right. There's this principle that's built in. Right. That. I'm only going to get out what I put in. It's going to be based upon the sweat of my brow. It's going to be based upon my own efforts or my own labors. And so whenever we take that promise of God and filter it through the law, as we've been saying in this series, it is going to produce the qualification. It is going to put the yoke on us. It is going to bring us back into a place of bondage. And that's what happened. Moses actually set them up for the evil report. He set them up. The law, look, if that had gone through Jesus, gone through grace, it would have been a different message, right? But because it went through Moses, because it went through the law, it came back, right? With we, <laughs> we see ourselves as giants, we see them as giants, and their eyes were grasshoppers. It came out, right, with qualifying language. It came out with, with things that were, they were focused in on their selves and not their God, okay? And this is the challenge with transitioning into the promise. This is the challenge with transitioning into what it is that God has called us to. Right now, we're in a season of trial and, and tests. And what often, and you guys know, Sundays we have been dealing with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit being our helper, right? But what we tend to do at times is we, be, we tend to retreat back to self, right? And God has been talking to us. And he's been trying to stir up. He said, look, I've given you the helper, right? I've given you the paraclete. I've given you the one that is there to aid you. 
He's there to comfort. He's there to guide. He's there to instruct. He's there to remind us of all things, remind us of our right place, our right standing with Christ, our righteousness. He's there to remind us of the favor that we have, the love that we have, the deliverance that we have, the healing that we have, right? But what happens is, again, when we consult more with natural things, when we consult more with what we see, when we are looking at it based upon our own eyes, and not the eyes of faith, not the eyes of grace, then what happens is we come back with that evil report. I know there's so many things that I can think back in life and times where I can remember like being in that position where God told me something that was so grand. I'm still in that position. Yvonne, she uh, just posted the other day some her testimony of when she had uh, one of the, her most challenging moments on her journey to where she's at right now. It was a breakdown. But what happens? She began to look internally. Me too. You too. We all have done it. And we begin to get our eyes focused off of the promise or the one that is the giver of the promise, the source of the promise. And we begin to do what? We filter it through Moses. We filter it. We want to see, can we get it? Can we overcome it? Is that is 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 that situation something I can step into? Do I have the qualifications? Do I have the referrals? Do I have what I need to be able to get this done? And that's what happened. The law always presents back to us something other than what God intended. It takes us away from the original message. So Caleb, man, I don't know what happened with Caleb. Caleb ends up coming back with the with the with the message that was of faith, a message that was of grace. He came back saying that we were more than able to be able to do this. Now, this is that 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 same journey. This is that same that that same situation that we're in. At times when God is trying to bring us out of bondage, right? We have to get Moses off of it. We already talked about this earlier. Moses had to die. Moses could not lead them into the promise because the law cannot lead you into the place of rest. It does not have the ability. And that's where we left off last week. Now, I want to look at Hebrews 4 again and bring us back over there. I want to bring us back over to Hebrews 4. And when we, when we look at Hebrews 4, what, we, what we're going to see is the labor, the work that is actually required, right? The work that's required to bring us into uh, that place of rest. Now, right here, verse four says, therefore, let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them because it was, uni it was not united by faith in those who heard it. Okay, so here's the thing. The gospel, the good news goes out. The gospel goes out, but until it is united with faith. But how can we unite it with faith? Well, the way to unite it with faith is to stay in the place of grace. Okay, catch this. The way to unite it with faith it's to stay in the place of grace. In other words, we have to keep ourselves in check. We have to keep ourselves in order, understanding that I cannot get this done. I hear the good news and I say, oh, great. Sounds like a job for God. That's how it has to happen. Because if we begin to think that it's going to be about us, that is when we hear that gospel message, we filter it through Moses, and then we're not able to enter really into that place of rest. Again, because we can only produce right what we can produce. But when we're trying to get into that place of rest, into that promised place that God has for us, it requires that we stay in this place of faith. And the way we stay in faith is that we stay in grace. We stay trusting in his grace. We stay trusting in his goodness, trusting in his love, trusting in his mercies. Right. So what happened? They heard the message again. They heard the message, but it did not profit them. Why? Because they did not mix it. They did not unite it with faith. And what is he really saying? They did not stay in that place of grace. See, uh, Peter steps out on the water again because he heard the right message. But what happens, he began to consider himself, consider the factors, consider the things that he was going up against. And that is when the sinking comes. So it's our job to stay in this place of faith. It's our job to stay in this place of grace that keeps us right, keeps us in in the right posture 
to be able to receive what God has for us. God's not holding anything back, but oftentimes we get in the way when we begin to put the pressure on ourselves. God is asking for the pressure. He's asking for you and me to rely on him, to fully rely, to fully trust, right? To rest in his goodness, to rest in his faithfulness, all right? So the message alone, the gospel being preached alone is not enough. We have to rest. And so it says here in verse three, for we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, although his works were finished. In other words, it's already there. It's already put in place. There's not something as we've been saying in this series, he's not coming up with the solution right then. It's a finished work. It's a complete work. But what happens? We have to do what Jesus only say what the father is saying and do what the father is doing. He just told us what he's doing. He's resting. So we have to get into that same place. We have to get into that same place. He says, for he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, they shall not enter my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience. He again fixes a certain day today saying through David after so long a time just as has been said before today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts do not harden your hearts traditionally what has happened is we have got into this place where we hear a hardened heart as someone that just has like like evil stored up in their heart wickedness and all this type of thing but really the hardened heart is the heart that has switched from grace to works that has switched from from trusting in God's efforts to trusting in his own efforts from has switched from trusting in his righteousness to putting their trust in their own righteousness. He's calling us not to harden the heart. And he's saying if we could stay in that place of grace, if we could stay in that place of faith, then we're walking into that that promise for walking and receiving that place of rest. Let's continue. Verse eight says, for if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another. He would not have spoken of another. If Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also. Okay. Check this out. Jesus says, I only do what my father does. I only say what my father is saying. This is what's happening. This is that 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 follow the leader getting into that same place. <laughs> we made the joke. Jesus was sleep on the boat. Disciples should have looked around and been like, you got a pillow, too. Right. You got another one. Right. It's that it's that place that when he's resting, we're resting. When he's believing, we're believing. When he's when he's trusting, we're trusting. When he's when he's declaring and and, and speaking advancement, that we're, we're speaking the same thing. That when he is when he is caring about right the disenfranchised, when he's caring about those that are not uh, that 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 are less than those that are that it see that's the problem. We're not doing what the Father is doing. And one of the reasons we're not doing what the father is doing is because we haven't heard the right message about the father. But that's another message. Therefore, let us be diligent, he says, to enter that rest so that no one will fall through following the same example of unbelief. Watch this. For the word of God is living and active, living and active and sharper than any two edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him whom we have to do check this out what god is calling us to is this place of rest He's called us to this place of rest so that we so that we can get to this place where we are resting just like him. He's looking for us to follow his lead. He's looking for us to not actually mess up the process, 
to not mess up the process. Okay, that we mess it up when we filter it through Moses. All right, this this is very simple. What he's trying to do is make sure that it's a guarantee. He's trying to make sure that it is something that we do not get uh, lost in the process by getting into the way. All right, we're going to look at Romans 4 and finish this off. Romans chapter 4, we're going to look at this. Romans 4. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That is all they needed to do. All they needed to do was believe God. Now we're going to skip down a little bit and we're going to look at verse 13. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would be the heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who of are of the law are heirs, faith is made void. If those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void. A lot of times people are in this place again where they believe that that the enemy to faith is fear. That the enemy to faith is 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 really uh, being in this this scared or, uh, or fearful place. But here we have to track fear is really just the manifestation of the underlying issue. And what is really the underlying issue? They're only fearful because their trust has shifted to the wrong place. They put their their trust in chariots. They put their trust in horses. They put their trust in themselves instead of in their God. See, faith really is just staying in this place where he's got it. Right. It's staying in this place where his grace has it, his his mercy has it, his love has it covered. It's a it's really a resting in God. It's a trusting in his grace. But so he says right here, he says that uh, the law. Right. For if those are of the, of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise is nullified and the promise is nullified. Why? Because the law brings about wrath. But where there is no law, there is no violation. Here's why he likes to keep the law out of the way. Because when you begin to try to qualify your way in, it always disqualifies you. It always disqualifies you because built into it, the system is already the, yep, you're fired. Nope, yeah, that doesn't work. Nope, it's not enough, right? It's already tied into it. The, the, the response is in there. Now, what he says here, he says, where there is no law, there is no violation, right? When we stay in this place of grace, when we stay in this place of grace, we stay in this place of qualify. <laughs> it's cool because the more and more I identify with not having the qualifications, the more I stay qualified. <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of funny. The more I'm, I'm like, yeah, this is way too big for me. There's no way that I can get into this. Right. There's no way that I could get that job. There's no way that I can uh, fix this relationship. There's no way that I can get it, it. It just invites. It's like, yep, you're good. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. You're exactly right. Thank you. Perfect for the job. <laughs> Unqualified is the new qualified. When you're talking about what God wants to do, he wants us to stay in this place of understanding. Look, it's not about me. It's about you. Let's finish this off. Verse 16 says, for this reason, it is by great. It is by faith in order that it may be accordance with grace so that the promise will be guaranteed. I want you to understand that the guarantee is attached to the grace. The guarantee is attached to that stain in that place of faith. But what happens is we shortcut and we short circuit the, the, the system and what God is trying to do when we step back into looking at ourselves. And honestly, what happens is we we go about that direction. And when we go down that direction, we figure out, man, I, I can't do this. This is too much. It's, it's just it, this won't work. And then we're back to the place that we should have been at the first <laughs> stayed in in the first place. We should have stayed in that place of rest. So what God really wants us to do is he's trying to get us into this place where we're receiving that which is already prepared, that which is already made ready. But the way that we do it is staying in this place of grace. 
We're going to pick this up next week. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for that faithfulness that you have for us. That is forever. We just thank you for what you're doing in this series, revealing more and more of your son to us, revealing more and more of your purpose to us. And we just receive, we continue to repent of our thinking that is not like you, that is not like heaven, that is not testifying of what Jesus is testifying of. That is not that is not in line with what the Holy Spirit is communicating. We repent from thinking that we have to do it ourselves, but we receive that which you have for us. And we continue to let you reveal more and more and more of who we are in you. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name.